What's going on, comicbook.com? I'm Jim Viscardi, and we are continuing our coverage from San Diego Comic Con 2022. And with me in the studio is none other than director Tim Miller. Tim, howdy. Welcome. Thank you. Comic Con's back. To be here. I know. It's crowded out there. <laughs> it is. You forget. <laughs> you said, you were, before we were shooting, you said this is your 28th con. Yes. Yes. I missed, I mean, everybody missed for COVID. Sure, right. And then I missed because uh, I was shooting Terminator. Uh huh. But every other one, I've been here. Man, hey, since I, I moved out to, I gotta imagine. I gotta imagine it's blown your mind a little bit on uh, just like how big this thing has got. You know, it w it's great yeah. always. Sure, of course. It, but and, and 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 the fact that it's so big means that we kind of broke through in <laughs> pop culture, which is great for everybody. Right. But I do miss like you want to go to a G Force panel. <laughs> hey, you can just walk into a G Force panel. <laughs> you want to go talk to. The <laughs> Some comic book creators, yeah. you can walk Down up right and there. talk to them, and and you can't do that anymore. Yeah. You, but. With one thing I love about you is like you are you're a legitimate like diehard comic comics guy. I'm a pretty what big Marvel nerd. Can you but, can, you, can but, you tell us what your collections like? Like do you, do you do you still have one or oh, I have it at Blur. In fact, it, my wife uh, Blur's it's it's a cool art studio, but it's got sure. a two story bookcase, oh, nice. and on the bottom is art books that I mostly buy at like Stuart Ng and stuff sure. when I'm here because a lot of uh, great booksellers come here. Yep. And of course, I go down Artist Alley and buy uh -huh. all the other stuff. But um, my whole comic book collection, which was in the comic boxes for years, right. is finally up on the shelf. There you go. And uh, you know, it's really like 30 years worth because even though I still buy a lot of comic books, sure. I, I give them away now like, okay. because I, it, it just the collection right. is just too big otherwise uh -huh. and uh and, you know a lot of the g g artists that blur have kids so right like, so take, gonna... take them if you want them and give do them you them. do you have any like crown jewels of your comic collection uh, uh, I t you know i was never that kind okay. of collector i sure i don't I, I used to put them in bags because <laughs> but it, but right. i didn't really take care of them and the uh -huh. ones that i really love are in the worst shape because right because you because you yeah, you read them time and time but <laughs> i do have the original uh akira not the original ones, but the the one Marvel published. Oh, they did okay, the, yep. You know the digital color version, right. which was like the first digital color comics, and they were like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I used to do airbrush, so it, it, the look of those was just amazing. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and you know, my Lone Wolf and Cub uh, mm -hmm. run with the Frank Miller covers, yeah. pretty awesome. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I gotta say, congrats on uh, making the Goon announcement. Uh, I'm very happy at, at the to con. do that. I know. Um, we continue to disappoint fans, and we get these things from you know Kickstarter messages like I feel betrayed today, and I and I just wish people knew how hard it is to, to yep. do this. Shit. Uh huh. And it's not because we're well, maybe because we're stupid. I, I <laughs> but we never stop trying. And sure, I think if you talk to Eric, mm -hmm. th that's why Eric never says, okay, fuck you, you've had your chance. Right. I'm moving on. We, yeah. He's like, okay, I get it. Every time, because we, mm -hmm. we're in constant communication. Um, and Patrick um, uh, Osborne, who's directing it, he mm -hmm. came in and uh, directed one of the Love, Death, Robots episodes. Yeah. Just a great fucking guy. Yeah. And, and he loves the goon, and so he so knew we it. were doing it, and he's like, are you gonna direct? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, uh -huh. and you know, and, and, and I do want to make it clear that it, it was originally going to be Jeff Fowler and I co-directing, uh -huh. but Jeff's busy. He's going to make he's making Sonic movies, yep. and I got another thing I hope to be doing, and and I don't want the goon to like wait sure. behind our other agendas, mm -hmm. even though I would love to do it. I love animation. Uh huh. But, yeah, that's awesome. So what what was the thing that that kind of finally pushed it over the the hump a bit? Um, you know I. It kept getting embroiled in the like the Fox thing, and, sure, then, and okay. then Disney imploded, or right. Disney bought Fox, and that and it took a while to extract. Yeah. Uh, but really, there's a guy at uh, Netflix in charge of adult animation, Mike Moon, yeah. who uh, he just he always loved the comic, and yeah. and so they actually said yes almost a year ago. Wow. And and the deal is just <laughs> just takes a long time to. Right. Uh, Eric like, wasn't that uh, forensic about. The, the the back history of Albatross comics and all sure. of that stuff. So right. there's, oh, there's know, a fair yeah. amount of lawyering. There's a lot of un untangling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Uh, other big news uh, that coming out of this weekend, uh, Deadpool's on Disney+. Plus. I know. And it's... Uh, it, Scarring millions of <laughs> children as we speak. But I gotta imagine, like, like, that's... 
I feel like since that since that movie has come out, um, and like there there's been a bit of like not necessarily a generational gap, but a, a, probably a decent gap of kids who were probably too young to see it, who are probably now at that age where like they're a little bit like they're on the verge, rebellious, and they can kind mm-hmm. of see it. And then like you know some kids who are, um, do you kind of anticipate this just kind of being uh, just help you know bringing more people to it and just being like man. This movie was awesome. I, I have no idea. I mean, it's been, I, the fans have been, people tell me all the time how much they love the movie, which is, yeah. I, I mean, I have, like, every nerd has sure. your go-to movies. Like, right. I'll watch Gladiator every time it's on television. That's I don't right. care what else. Is, I'll watch <laughs> Aliens or Alien, or anytime I just skip over it. And mm-hmm. people tell me, that Deadpool is like that for them. Uh-huh. Of course, I can't watch it because it scars me. Sure. Um, but no, I, I, <laughs> Of course. I still, I watched it a, a couple months ago, and I hadn't watched it for, I don't know, mm-hmm. two years. And sure. I was like, you, f- you forget. It's like watching somebody else's movie, almost, uh-huh. you know? That's awesome. It's weird. It's a weird weird feeling <laughs> Terminator is weird too because you, you have this cognitive dissonance of being there doing it right. and, but also you're you're witnessing the polished product of a lot of people right. um, being involved with it right. and it's a weird thing yeah no of course uh, so obviously you know uh, you, we, we talked about the goon um, what what are what were some of the other like you know just comic book characters or, or franchises or some of the indie stuff that you just like love and adore and you know that um, well i mentioned lone wolf and cub lone wolf fin- and cub. fincher and i went after lone oh wolf really cub. yeah together um and we got a lot of interest in it um we were going to do it photorealistic cg oh, wow. so we could do like a huge right budget and recreate medieval china mm-hmm. and do a trilogy and andy walker even um he he i loved the way he did this he took all the comics and he basically built the film script out of the comic pages. Oh, that's incredible. So it was really great. You know, they were different, um, yep. different, because uh, it's very episodic. Sure. Way. So he, he did that, and then we took it to Universal, mm-hmm. and they just couldn't clear the rights. Oh, wow. Because the the, the artist and the writer, mm-hmm. both of their family, they're, they're both um, deceased, and their families have the rights, but it's kind of spread out and sure. messy, and once again, <laughs> Um, <laughs> fo- fo- foiled by paper. Foiled by paperwork. Yes. Uh, and so it just it just yeah. didn't happen. Uh-huh. Um, the, like, the X-Men one forty two, which was my mm. my uh, key pride mm-hmm. movie, which man, you know, yeah. and, and I and I I knew it was dead as soon as that because sure. they'd have to rebuild the whole X Men franchise right. at Marvel before they got around to doing like yeah. single character right. episodes. But so. if you've never read that comic. It's perfect. It's Home Alone meets Aliens, mm-hmm. and it's Alien, um, and it's just <laughs> great. Would, would would your approach have been fairly like close to to what that was? I don't think was, it or? matters right now, but, well, Brian, but I got Brian Bendis to write the script. Right, so I remember yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, so it was. Um, yes, it was. It uh-huh. was the comic. That's awesome. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta ask. Um, the the, hangar, I mean, the danger room. It had a big fight in the hangar with the blackbird, and we, we've all we've all been robbed. Uh, it was great. It would have been great. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I gotta ask. Look, uh, the the rise in um, adult focused animation has been um, has been great to see. And like you've been one, uh, you know, with uh, what love you've been doing, uh, love death robots, and like have been. I feel like like kind of on the forefront, and then like kind of everyone else kind of you know uh, came in behind you. Um, why do you think that is? What what is it about uh, that that you think it's now is it is its time versus you know. Five ten years ago. Well, I, I might qualify that by saying we're maybe in the forefront in the like the U.S. Sure, but we're so far behind the rest of the world. Fair, um, you fair, know, fair. Anime has been doing that right. uh, forever, and Europe was much more open with it. Um, but why? Here's my theory: is because um, this is a whole generation of people that grew up with video games, fairly violent and adult video games yep. that are essentially adult animation yeah um and they don't grow out of it Mm -hmm. right they just they kind of we stay in that culture even though so you've got 40 year old people i mean if you walk the floor down there (laughs) that's it it's more middle-aged or 20 something or yeah and and these people it's still reading Mm -hmm. comics is not something you grow out of playing video games is not something you grow out of that's right um and so i think they just want to live in those worlds a little bit longer and 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 it's just made it more culturally relevant. Right. I mean, video games. When you look at the numbers, I mean, that's those are big numbers. It dwarfs movies, television, NBA, <laughs> Major League Baseball, NFL, 
combined. Yeah. Um, it's a yeah. It's staggering. Yeah, it really. Because so, Blur does a lot of stuff for the right. Video. No, exactly. Yeah, that's why yeah. it's. We it's have a, some interesting things coming in that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I can't talk. About oh okay, that's fair. Uh, I, I'm gonna. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. So I'm gonna ask you. I'll ask you one more question. Uh, more more con related. Um, what what are you hunting for on the floor? Is there do you do you, do you come to cons with like a oh, I need to try I need to find this this and this or is it like you you see what catches your eye? Uh, Yes and no. Okay. I mean, there. If you go down to Artist Alley, and yep. then there's a couple of other places where the artists do books that they only sell. That's right. At the con, yep. and uh, and so I I pick up a lot of those, and then I, right. I make a big box and I ship it back to that's Blur, right. and then that's know, the only way to do it. And the guys do it. We do have. Uh, I wish it could have been here in time, but we have an art book for Love Death and Robots. Oh, called, really? Like all three seasons, big coffee table. Oh, that's awesome. It's f amazing. Because I would start. <laughs> I would, even though it's my show, right. I'll, I'll, the, all the companies working on it, you know, they do internal comic uh, concept art and stuff, and yep. I would see all this great art coming onto Art Station. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like, that's from our show, and I've never seen it. <laughs> that's from our show. I never saw. I never saw that sketch. And so I'm like, I want to put it all together in a book. And we really busted our ass to do uh, a, a, a really nice book. Today. That's awesome. We love the show. We that's, really do. That's um, great. I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us today. For more on Comic Con 2022, keep it locked into ComicBook.com.